Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Lee on TV. I'm your host, Mark Fosco, here for another special edition of the show. I've got the man that inspired me to do what I do now <laughs> on uh, live with me, uh, Mr. Gary Vaynerchuk. And, uh, you know, I'm the big maniac and all that, and it's an honor, an absolute honor to have you here on the show with me. Um, to be here. I really appreciate your hustle. We've been trying to make this happen for a long time. And uh, I love rewarding perseverance. Uh, <laughs> I love this task. I'm thrilled to be here. I hope you don't love Oh, I'm doing outstanding. Same for you. Um, let's, uh, I'm sure most people who watch my show know who you are. Um, but let's kind of, you know, introduce yourself and kind of give us where, how you started with like, WLTV and we'll go from there. I grew up in a liquor business. Um, my dad had a liquor store uh, since we basically moved to America. He, he was a stock group, then eventually a manager, and then an owner, art owner, and then owner of liquor stores in New Jersey. When I was 14, I was trying to the family business. Hated liquor and beer, off the wine bug over 16, mainly because people collected wine, and then uh, decided to launch an e-commerce wine business very early on. It was quite innovative in the wine world, email newsletters, um, full page ads, New York Times, and Wall, and Wall Street Journal, and Wine Spectre, the one of the largest independent wine retail companies in America called Wine Library. Uh, loved innovation, Google AdWords, blogging, forums, and then boom, here comes YouTube. I think it's going to be big. It makes me the start to start a wine show called Wine Library TV in February of 2006, so very early 06, less than a year after YouTube has come out. And uh, kind of the rest of history, right? The show really took off. It became kind of like this thing that inspired amazing things like this. Right. Hundreds of thousands of people watched it. Um, and it, it became my game changer for my career. I started using Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, things like that to build the show's awareness. And I in love with social media, the way I found with wine. And now I'm in a social media agency based out of New York, still uh, involved in the family business, the very last operation with an agency, because they in the media. Um, retired from doing online video after almost six years. Um, did a thousand episodes of my library TV, and then did a nine daily great, which is a world play, and uh, one of the great chapters of my life. Awesome. You know, and, and I started watching probably around 2007. Um, there was, you were probably a couple hundred, well, maybe, a, yeah, a couple hundred episodes in, uh, and I started watching. I found you just because I was listening to a podcast from this lawyer in Indianapolis who was doing a wine thing, and I was just getting into wine, um, and then I was looking for other things on iTunes, and your, your stuff came up, and it was video, and I was like, okay, well, I've got an Xbox, I've got a little thing to connect my computer to the TV. And I started watching it, and I was instantly hooked. You know, I can remember, especially the earlier days of there was the there was the the hate Gary and love Gary, and I was of the camp. I love Gary. You know, your your intro, the way you the way you hit everything. Um, you know, being somebody that I was, I grew up in Jersey, but I was born in Jersey, so my parents from there. So to me, it was like it, I understood that kind of um, yes, intensity. The so I, I immediately took to it. I had having people go, oh, I can't stand the guy. I'm like, why not? He knows the stuff. He's telling you the things. What, what don't you like about him? So, you know, I was definitely one of your uh, fans and one of your the people that was promoting yeah, you. And, and to clear up any of these why people can stand you, know, <laughs> it was high energy, high intensity, very extroverted, plenty of bravado. So I've always respected people that didn't love it at first. Probably the thing that would accept me is of the hundreds of thousands of emails that I've gotten through the years for the show, maybe even millions. Uh, the fact that so many people said things like, I hated him at first, but then I realized I actually didn't know what you were talking about, that was, uh, that, that was super rewarding. But to the special group, uh, like yourself, they got me from day one. I'm really thankful and I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, thanks. 
Yeah, so that's yeah, that's how I got you know into into your stuff. Um, you've got uh, you had a thousand shows, and I can remember watching. You know, there was, there was every once in a while you would you would have the I don't have a comment down below. I don't get a number of comments. I want to stop doing this. Yeah. Um, what did you really kind of feel? That you, I figure you know, thousands is a good, is a good number to stop it. What were you thinking at the point where you really needed to kind of pull yourself away from that? Um, kind of when I felt like, you know, Misha come into my life, I had a baby. Um, I thought the show was fun, and even when I was at a thousand, I definitely felt some, you know, when I'm not a hundred percent into something, I'm finished. So I was 98% into it. Right. Because I don't think people are into anything, right? Oh, yeah. I'm not a believer in saying that it's ran its course. It felt like it didn't feel fail because mine is amazing subject matter, right? It changes every year, so you're you're quite lucky. It's like current events or sports news. Um, it just felt like it was time. You know, I my husband and I had started in media. I had been interested in talking about business and social web. And she was starting to shift in my body to be family and, and very honestly interests. Um, but always was hard. I mean, I really wanted to stop at thousands. And then I got cold feet. Let me give you some excuse in this interview. <laughs> cold feet probably about eight twelve weeks before. I kinda of decided in two thousand um I guess I'm ahead of you talking about ten, eleven, like eleven, right? In two thousand ten I decided that at the end of that year that I was going to stop at a thousand. It was coming up. It was right around five year anniversary. I felt it was right. And then I really panicked in my brain because I loved it so much. And really, very honestly, it's so cliche, but it was more about you and everybody else who really loved the show. The thought of like, letting people down really scared me. A lot of times I started cutting out. Not a lot. Not even more than normal, but I was then thinking about it. How to answer that you'll never stop. I, you know, I know you've been doing it a long time, don't stop. Sort of really being um, emotional for me. And I also wanted to learn about subscription model. So Gail Gray felt right, right? And so I always intended to stop at a thousand, that was it. And because of cold speed and the emotions, I decided to do Gail Gray. And that's ultimately probably why Gail Gray believed the crazy nine episodes, because I was pretty much done, but I didn't know it yet. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, and, and then you were also doing the monthly wine club. Now, since Texas has the laws and will allow me to ship. I kind of I, I don't know if you're still doing that or not, but you were doing those videos for that. Yeah, I am. Even those are thinking about stopping next year because again, if you're not doing something 110 percent, I want to be doing it. The funny part is, is I feel like I will do my video again in my life. I do. I feel like I'm good at it. I miss wine. Um, I mean, look at this. Keyshawn Johnson had a way out now. Oh, nice. Yes, great, right? Like, how much fun would that be for me to do that? I think you might have saw Mark Kennedy pay attention when I came out of retirement. Right. I did a Reddit had that question about what line was for the top supreme. Yes. So, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, now that I've been out of it for a year and change, um, <laughs> I do have these feelings of maybe returning here and there, whether they're bar or water specials or once a month. I do feel like there's a prayer of me making a re-entrance into the line. Oh, I think that would be awesome. Um, now, since you have left, I, I don't know if maybe you've noticed it or not, but it feels to me that there's a huge void in, in this stuff that you and I have done because I, I don't think... Like, you you were a one man band. The fact that we had bought and and you had uh, um, who's for you now, uh, Captain. Captain. Yeah, Eric. You know, and um, I mean, yeah, you've got, you've had a little bit of help there, but I mean, it's it's, it's not like you you had company that was behind you producing these things. I mean, there, there's there's people out there. I think actually suspect it was kind of softer videos, but in, in the wine review stuff, I mean, I can remember Denver wine guys were doing stuff. Uh, some other people are doing stuff, and it doesn't seem like there's anybody else out there. Do you think that that was partly because you left, or do you think that there's a there's this trend that maybe the, the fad of it has, has diminished? Um, 
I think if I was still doing it today, it was 110% what I would be doing, um, that would be way bigger than ever. I feel like I'd be crushing it on mobile. Right. I feel like I feel like I'd be doing things with Hulu and Roku and video on demand and other distribution channels. I I do think it's a talent thing. You know, like I I feel like I could come back right now and six months be at an amazing place. You know? Uh, so I never felt threatened at the top of the morning video. Right. <laughs> um I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful that people aren't not doing it because they think that, well, I can't do it, or I like make. I really hope people know why I stopped. I mean, I stopped because I did for five, six years every day, right. five, five years every day. Um, it's not like you know. I, I see snarky comments here and there about, about around blog posts or tweets about I retired and saying that I was. I just used the wine world to become a bigger businessman or all these horseshit things. That really a family mark because it's not like I did it for weeks. Right. And no, I don't see that because, you know, I see, I see these other wine... I see these other wine shows that have come up or these guys do wine reviews and they do it for like two months and then they stop. And, yeah, I you know, know, I just I don't wonder. If you, they, I don't think that they have that passion. I think they thought they would be the next Gary, that they would they just have to do it for a couple months and they would be stars, you know? So who would be a great person to talk to? Was there back room channel discussions, emails back and forth, blog posts, tweets? Because when I stopped, I really needed a break and I kind of like really didn't look at stuff or 90 to 120 years. Was there a lot of discussion or belief that, that it was clear now that somebody was alive to that spot? No, not at all. I uh, I had on Twitter with my followers, and I, I think even one of your, one of the, even you know, either episode 1000 or one of the episodes prior to that, I probably said something about passing the torch. Because they, even back then, I kind of felt that um, there wasn't anyone doing, and I'm not, not wasn't a clone of you, but nobody was doing something that was, in the same vein as doing some wine reviews and giving some knowledge and, and just, just being honest with your thought with the wine instead of kind of trying to kiss ass to somebody, you know. Um, and but after after all that happened, I started noticing some of the other people that were involved with the, with the video stuff, they, they either went back to going into the writing or transitioned to the writing or they just stopped altogether for whatever the reason was, you know. Uh, you know, Matt down in Miami, you know, he was doing he was doing videos and I remember talking to him saying, you know, you have done videos in a while and he's like, Well I just kinda of think that it is run its course, you know. And I'm like, Oh, okay, <laughs> you know. I mean, I, I think videos as big if not bigger than ever, YouTube's more important than it's ever been in the world. Social cam, Diddy, I mean there's such opportunity. I just think that uh, you know, it comes down to the the skill set and had the, the personality, the knowledge, how to cultivate an audience. Right. And we all, we're all going to get what we deserve, right? Yeah. You know, and so, I hear you. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally, you know, I, I've gone from having a flip cam and, and this set up, you know, just, you know, a table with a red tablecloth on it and, and, a, and a, a ginger cookie tin as my spit bucket to now I uh, you know, I bought a little stainless steel bucket with my little label on there and yeah. I don't have it I don't have a jet helmet, you know. <laughs> okay, hikey for me, but you know, I am a jet fan, by the way. Are you are you enjoying it? absolutely I absolutely enjoy doing this, you know. I mean I have to set up a set every time I do this. You know, I, I everything's upstairs in the spare room, I've got lights and I've got cameras and I've got all the all the stuff I have to set up. And it takes it takes time. And then, you know, it takes time, um, you know, I, I do, I'm a little more sophisticated than I used to be. I've got Final Cut Pro going, I've got, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing investments to the thing, you know, I've, I've invested money into music, intro music, outro music, you know, so I, I put a lot of effort into it because I, I love what I do. I love passion, you know, and, and I think what I've seen other people is that, like I said, I think they just kind of thought they could just go in and just, Organized set, which you know, you prove that that's not what that's what you have to persevere with. It. I can remember seeing the earlier videos and then going back and watching some like the first few, hair is all tousled and you like you, look like you just came off the floor. Let's record this real quick and we'll get back out there, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, I think I think that uh, you know, there's there's definitely a uh, a void that 
I think I think people, if they really just kind of thought about it, they, they would do it, um, and they could really latch on to the stuff. Um, but even so, like, you know, I, I've noticed that over my, you know, when I look at my views on Blip, I see that it's no longer um, people are going to my website necessarily to watch the videos, not really watching it on iTunes, they're watching it on their TiVo box. They're watching it, Roku's starting to get a little bit more traction. And so I decided to go for a 30 minute format. Instead of trying to make a 10 minute and make it a show and, and have segments and, you know, use Blip for advertising. And, you know, TiVo does the show, those ads, you know, so be kind of you know, somewhat serious about it, but you know, it, it isn't my primary gig. It's, it's my no, secondary. You know, the passion excitement. I mean, listen, I was losing money. I love ET back then. There's plenty of other things I can make more money on. It's just, it's fun when you have an audience and and something be passionate about. So good for you. Oh yeah. What so else? um, so let's talk about like the wine stuff that you did. I mean, um, I can remember watching. You know, you, you would. Obviously, most of the wine came from the shop, but you didn't have a fear of saying you didn't like the wine. Yeah. So talk, talk about you know, what, why, was, was, why did you do it that way instead of like making the sales piece for your shop? Because the agenda of day one was to become bigger than the store, meaning if I was going to get any credibility, I had to be honest. And, and honestly, it started with like, Episode 9 or 10, when I realized some people were emailing me and saying, love the show, hope I run into you. And I was like, run into me? I was like, hmm. Somebody's going to run into me at a restaurant, give me a glass of wine and say, what do you think? And if I see something different than I said on the show, I'm going to be a poser and a fraud, and I'm going to be the over. And so I basically said, trust your palate, whatever it is it is. I mean, there's a lot of politics behind some canning some of those wines. People that were my friends, one winery, one of the at the house, you know, when I was in Napa. Um, other people I've done millions of dollars in business with, friends owned it, like the distributor carried it. It was painful, the pain wine, but I was more interested in the other people on the other end of the camera mm-hmm. than I was in the people that were at my cash register or in my DOS system. And that's what I decided to do, and that's just how it happened, and that's the way it always was. Now, did you have any, did you have like some wines that maybe, because it seemed like most of the wines you had was effectively a first time, like on the show was a first time tasting. Did you have ones that maybe you, you maybe had, you probably didn't like, that you still did, or did you say, I won't do those if I didn't like them? I only did wines that I've never tasted before. Okay. One of my first reaction to be when we got on camera, I think, I think that authenticity worked, and so that's how I did and, then I, and I, I really love that part. I mean, I tried, uh, you know, like a model, oh, everyone can tell I can model a lot of what I did off of you. Sure. And I do very similar thing, you know, I I, I bought and just buy wine that I, I've never had, and I will first time have it on the show. Now, there's occasionally I'll have wines that I've made, like I'll get something off of food and you get like five bottles worth. Well, if I don't get to it in time, I may just go, well, we open one of these bottles, and if I like it, I'll go ahead and review it on the show, but if I don't like it, well, it's been a handful of times, so like maybe four or five times really, that I may have had the wine prior, or it might have been something like one of my episodes I did, like a Ravenswood Inn, was the same vintage, but it was, that was one of those wines that was like got me into love and stuff, you know? I've had tons of wines on the show. I mean, I used to go and set every wine on the show. In a different vintage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, we should explain that part. It's, it's not that you didn't have it ever before, but it was you didn't have that vintage. Um, but yeah, you know, I, that was one of the things I really admired about it was that it was a first reaction because you could see, and that's why I think really video versus versus a written blog, you can, you can sit there and spend all your time like really crafting your thoughts. Video is it, there. You can see it in your face. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I credit you for like you know introducing me to the things like Cab Franc, you know, uh, Petit Verdot, you know, those those types of things, and looking for those elements in those wines. Maybe not 100, percent but you know, getting those little things. You know, I remember doing your wine, and and getting a little bit of pepper, and it took a couple sips, and all of a sudden I'm like, you little stinker, you you, you snuck a little bit in there, you know, you love greenness, you know. So 
Yeah, I mean, that, that was you know, some of the stuff with that. Um, that means it really stood out for the thousand episodes that, that anything that was besides your dad being on, which was always awesome. Yeah, always awesome. Um, Probably, uh, you know, just like I do my show or a reaction, I'm going to give you my gut reaction. The fact that I'll be able to look back and watch how I age over five years is <laughs> really fascinating. The fact that it's there, right? The fact that my kids and grandkids and great grandkids will have that and great great that to me, the legacy is intense. Um, what else? Um, you know, the guests were super fun and the PX like like you and the two hundred to two thousand people that I could probably name right. that were there for three, four years. Um it's always the people, isn't it, Mark? It's never yeah. it's never it's always the people. It's Dick meal, it's going to the stadiums, it's it's the episode in Boxborough where I got to scum the people. Right. Um it's uh it's the Conan O'Brien first appearance that really shot off the show exposure. It's Talking about, you know, you go back to the post seven when I'm talking about Twitter and all the comments saying, let's list something. Mm-hmm. It's a legacy stuff. It's, it, um, I'm now thinking that I'm going to have a child. The Jets playoff runs, um, my interaction with Casper and Mott, um, AJ's 21st birthday, you know, brother 25 years old now, right? Yeah. His 21st birthday and his first taste of wine on the show. Um, yeah, a lot of memories. So now you've, you've had two books, we'll transition some books, like to crush it, and that's when we actually finally get eaten first in San Marcos. Yeah. Um, and I tell the story all the time that, uh, you know, I came up and I had all the, all the Vayner, Vayner Duck stuff going on, and, and uh, you had me sit down for a little bit, and, and uh, you were like, come on back to Austin, and I was like, I couldn't. I had like, started a new job, I had to work at 6 in the morning, I was like, there's no way, there's no way I'm going to survive going to Austin. Um, but, you know, that that was a that was an awesome thing to do in the tour, and thank you, Kami. Um, you know, do you have uh, do you have any plans for more besides those two books? Yeah, I'm actually right now in the beginning process of thinking about a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook, which is an updated version of how I think about storytelling. Okay. Uh, and, and marketing in this digital world. Um, and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I'm very excited about it. So, yeah, I'll probably write that next year, and I'm out with Paul, and uh, we'll see what it Awesome. Well, let's talk about the intermediate for a little bit. So, you transitioned into that. Um, what, what, do you, what does the intermediate do that maybe other people don't do? Micro content production. Okay. We produce pieces of content that we think people on Tumblr, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest will actually absorb, like, and use. And so I think we're very ahead in that yield. Um, storytelling in the modern web world, which is mobile, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, this is how we do now, right? It's like, yeah. That's how do you worry about that? Awesome. How do you, how do you tell people to tune in? or to buy coffee or whatever it may be. How do you sell things in that way? And we're trying to figure that out. And I'm in early, very early in all social things. So our IP, our unique IP, I think is very powerful. Awesome. Um, all right, so talk sports for a second. Dude, what happened, what's happened to your dad, man? <laughs> it's a combination of bad drafting and, uh, and injuries. This season was pretty great. We're actually playing better than I thought the last two weeks. Right. Um, no Santonio Holmes, no Levis. Tough to recover from two, three, or four best players being hurt. Um, and then, you know, Vlad Dukas and Bernie Wilson. Um, you can't take people, Kyle Wilson, to a degree. You can't take people to first and second round and get nothing out of them at, or very little. Uh, so I think we're uh, I think we're, uh, we're a product of being too thin. The quarterback situation has yet to like, be completely solidified. And you know it is what it is. I mean, we got we got draft better. Yeah. Do you think you think Sanchez is being unfairly criticized? Do you think he's it's just enough or what? I think the only thing that I think Mark's a gamer, I think he's a hair inaccurate and I think that's tough to be in the NFL. Um so I think it's a combination of two. Yeah. I mean I I've I've had him in one of my fantasy leagues. I remember back in the day, Jericho Kostri, the best wide receiver you never heard of, you know, um, picking him up, you know. Uh, probably a little bit more now that, that I've, you know, 
follow you, but I was even as a kid, you know, it was the name, was the color, was the name for me, and just the whole New Jersey connection, and I love all the New York teams. I do love the Giants, you know, let mine know that. <laughs> but I have to take it to Jets over the Giants, you know, and if I take me off the Yankees over the Mets, and if it's hot, which I never get to see, it's always the Devils, you know, over the others. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, I think, you know, Watching you help me really just get that passion again for the Jets because they're always like, kind of like oh they're, they're my other they're my AFC team that I like not not my my main team yeah not the Vikings you know which I don't know how we're, we're doing as well as we are but we are you know but yeah. we didn't do so well this past this past you know against uh, Washington but you know RG three had to wake up <laughs> um, so when when are you gonna buy them because uh, that, that's your lifelong dream. Right. Uh, I would say, you know, 20, 30 years goes by. Right? I'm an accumulator. I don't think I'm going to do it overnight. So, 15, 20 years. Yeah. You know how, right? That sounds good. How do you feel about the Nets moving to Brooklyn? You know, they're kind of the near me, the Nets. Okay. So, uh, like, should that <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, I, I think I remember that somewhere. So, I didn't think about that before I asked the question. I'm excited about Brooklyn's exciting town. It's blowing up here in New York. It's a little Brooklyn in Manhattan. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do there. I think it's going to be pretty rad. Cool. Cool. Um, let's see. Uh, i got a couple of things. Yeah. Uh, you kind of already talked about it, about getting back into wine. How much do you, how much do you are you involved with wine library? Less and less every day. Brandon and my dad and uh, Ian and all these other people have really stepped up and taken control of operations over the last year. Uh, so as little as I've been since I was probably 15, keeping an eye on it here or there. But last year I kept quite a big eye on it. This year I've been beating off more and more. Big media got them 25 to 200 people this year. Oh, wow. Uh, very, very focused on being there. Um, and uh, that's kind of uh, Cool. Uh, we'll start up with some wine stuff. Uh, what do you think is coming down down the next like one to five years for us? You know, what's going to be the next big thing in in wine? Brazilian sparkling wine. Okay, I haven't had that yet. <laughs> I think that uh, I think that between the um, Olympics and the World Cup, we'll have a lot of people there. I think the wines are good. I'm very bullish on that. Um, Trying wines, so you know, I think I have a real shot. I'm interested in those wines. Um, Portugal continues to be the country that I mostly bet on. I love the quality for the price there. Um, I think we'll see a resurgence of, uh, I, I feel like one of the categories that's been bastardized, whether it's California Chardonnay or Australian Shiraz or Italian Pinot Grigio or New Zealand Sauvignon you know, Blanc, one of those four categories, I think will over index come back to maybe a winery that will like drive the innovation or new style that will get people back into it. So I think it feels like a, a far fetched but fun kind of prediction. So that kind of stick out. Cool. Do you have any uh, buys you want to recommend anybody? You know, I'm really, really high on Color, C A H O R S. I think those ones are really great. I think prices are very fair. I also think that cut on this uh, is something that people should be paying attention to. The white wines from Argentina, they're really aromatic, almost sweet like on the nose but still acidic on the palate and I'm a big big fan of those wines. Yeah, and and again like watching you that that expanded my my knowledge and my, my palate and my desire me. You know, it, it just not just having just the, the typical big four, you know, big four states and or just having just a typical old old stuff. Seeking out Portugal, seeking out the stuff from Spain that maybe not everyone's going for, you know, getting South America and you know, you know, and and getting things like ten nat. You know, someone asked me if if uh, if Darth Vader could be a uh, could be a lion, I would guess it ten nat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so. Um, it's just so fun for me to watch from afar their hustle and perseverance and effort. Uh, you know, I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. And again, you know, I, I I love watching you. I love watching what you've done. Uh, I wish you even more success. Uh, and you've got no, you've got a new addition to the family, Xander. Xander, yeah. And uh, you know, much much uh, success with that. And uh, again, it, just, it was an honor to have you here to be able to talk with you, um, you know, via Skype. And uh, you know, hopefully, make up to uh, New York and we can 
go have a glass somewhere and it would be awesome. I love it. Everybody who's watching, come say hello Facebook.com slash Gary and love to say hi to any more fans and oh you man. Keep awesome. Doing. Thanks. All right, folks, uh, we're going to wrap this up. As always, come by, visit the site. I'm going to link up everything for Gary, uh, all of his properties. Uh, Fred me up up there. Hit the donate buttons to the side. Post some comments down, and I'll see everyone again next time.